Yeah. Is that how they read it? And I wonder if people anywhere through it were like, what the F? I don't know what the movie knowledge was back then compared to today. Obviously, there were movie magazines, and you can find out what's going on. But the level of information that we have today versus back then and how fast something can be distributed now, I I don't – I think people would – were more surprised coming in and mm-hmm. it not being a Charlton Heston vehicle. It's right. something else, especially with the first five minutes that I've seen so far. But then it's again, it's Heston. almost it's like a good mystery, I guess, if he's not necessarily yeah, a part of it. It's almost like the psycho. Well, the Luke Skywalker thing yeah. of, of uh, Force Awakens where he's mentioned, 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 and, and then he, he's not there. And to literally, he said when he read the script the first time, he said he was speechless. Right. Yeah. So... In the rest of the credits, we also learn that Jerry Goldsmith has not returned to do our music. Yes. We get Leonard Ros- Rosenman. Yeah. Right. I had a note there. That's why the music sounds so different. And, and and to be fair, and you're right, it does. But at that very point when his name comes up, it gets into some of that do 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 da 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 little call and answers. But Goldsmith was invited back but could not do it because he was off doing Patton with Franklin J. Shaft. Right. Shafter took uh, his person yeah. with him. Uh, Russman did go on to have a very long career, very long career. He did the score for Star Trek for the voyage home, which he took over again for Goldsmith. Goldsmith had wow. done the theme for next generation and had been a member of that family. And it just makes you wonder, uh, you know, how familiar they were with each other and worked off each other. I think it's like coming in and sliding into somebody else's work. I, I think that I, I've read things like even John Williams knew Bernard Herman. You know, are are people that worked with Bernard Herman, the great composer who did Psycho and Citizen Kane, and you know, and John Williams had been a pi- pianist for people. I had the feeling that all these people kind were of working, other, and especially in the studio system, pass something off to somebody else. He went on to write the uh, theme for Falcon Crest, as well as he tying. Be happy tonight. Yeah, tying it back to Charlton Heston. He did the score for Charlton Heston Presents the Bible in 1997. Oh, my God. And then lastly, we get Mr. John Chambers is back to do our makeup. So thank God we've got John Chambers back to handle the most crucial element of the entire production. Don't negate Rossman's early, um, <laughs> Rosamond's early achievements. I mean, he did East of Eden and Rebel Without a Cause. Oh, did he? I missed that. He didn't come out of nowhere. Yeah. Well, I, I knew he had a long list, and those are films I love. I wish I'd seen and that. His earliest work there. was those two. So when he came in, when he stepped into this, he actually had a, a very good history. Not everybody else does, uh, but he actually no. had a history doing these movies. And he, if he was, he's probably one of the most prolific composers I've ever seen. That list is massive that's on imdb it is huge but john chambers back unfortunately one of the biggest parts of the budget that got cut makeup oh makeup was one fifth of the original budget something along those lines this one i didn't find out what percentage it was but it took a massive cut and will be reflected in the movie will it i don't know i don't know i'm assuming they're not setting us up for monkeys not yet well well no technically we have had apes in the movie so yes yeah, we've had what, a couple. Farm footage. Well, yes, but yeah. still, if we're doing our count, we've had them in there. They get to piggyback off the first movie. So, so we come to the our end of back. another minute of essential recap with a little bit of mixing in we're with the credits like setting us to fifteen seconds of real footage. Yeah. So we have them moving on um, after this moment. They they see the gigantic, shocking scene of the Statue of Liberty buried in sand. And what happens next is we see Nova and Taylor continuing to ride along the beach, and they appear to be at sunset. Mm-hmm. Kind of letting us know that this kind of moment is over, This this the day is over. Hopefully, we're finally venturing into new territory. We're well, getting something footage-wise, we are, but we'll find out story-wise. All I, right. I, I, that's it for me. I, I have nothing else. I'm looking forward to at least stepping in the next minute because I do feel like we're about to go somewhere new. New awesome. horizons, new territory. All right, yeah. gentlemen. Uh, as always, go check out our friends on moviesbyminute.com. You'll find lots and lots of people there doing what we do and doing it very well. So give them a listen. Give them a shout. Follow them. Let them know what you think. We suck. <laughs> so until tomorrow, for Rich and Sean, I'm Todd. Bye. Bye. Good night, everybody. Beneath the minute of the apes Beneath the minute of the apes Beneath the minute of the apes